2017 City of Flint Town Hall Meeting. Pray to God that everything that's said and done here in this place will bring glory and honor unto you and that you will receive all praise in the midst. Thank you for the opportunity again of calling on your holy and your righteous name for even now you're worthy to be praised. It is in the precious name of Jesus Christ that we pray with all of our sins forgiven. Amen. Thank you. And I hope you don't mind. I'm going to sit down while I do this. Um, but I do see that we have some pastors here. And I know the pastors have been very instrumental and have been a voice for the people when this whole water crisis started. So if the pastors that are in the house, any of the clergy that are in the house, if you all could stand up to be acknowledged, we would appreciate you. We need to thank you. And again, Pastor Stewart, thank you for opening your doors to us. I did see, uh, I know I saw Councilman Mays here. I saw uh, State Representative Phil Phelps. I see Councilwoman Galloway. I can't start calling individual names, but if we have any elected officials, would any and all elected officials please stand up so we can see who is here? Okay, and having said that, I think we are going to have some, some uh, words from our chief of police, Mr. Tim Johnson. We're going to go through what some of these ground rules are here as we get started with this town hall meeting. Chief. Good evening, everyone. Um, glad to see everybody here. Just want to say, uh, if there's any gentleman in the house, this is the church. Please remove your hats. Um, if, if you don't know that ladies is okay to wear their hats in the church, but gentlemen cannot wear their hats in the church, so please remove them. Also, um, just want to make sure that this meeting goes off the way it's supposed to, and that's everybody respecting everyone. If somebody's talking, please respect that person. Let them finish saying what they're saying before you cut across them. Um, please don't be in here trying to disrupt this meeting, because if you do, I'm going to escort you out, and I'm only going to take you to the back door, and then you're going to jail. I'm not going to play with nobody tonight. That's just how it's going to be. Well, I guess you heard that. <laughs> and welcome to the town hall meeting. This is probably the, about the seventh or eighth town hall meeting that we've had. And I am glad to see so many people here. If you want to come closer, come on closer. Um, but this is an opportunity. People have asked why this town hall meeting is so important. And while all of the town hall meetings have been important, this one is especially important because people have been waiting a long time uh, to hear what we're you know, going to discuss tonight. And this is an opportunity for all of you all to hear how we came up with the recommendation that we're putting forward as far as the permanent water source and um, our backup. And it's our opportunity to hear from you all as well, to hear what your questions are, what your concerns are, and to let you know that if there is some information that is, we don't have this evening, this is a continued dialogue. We have the 30-day uh, period for people to weigh in on this, and I know we're going to be giving information out about uh, further town halls, whether it's this kind or what. We know we have some scheduled for the radio, but this is an opportunity for the public. The last time we had a press conference and people were upset because we weren't taking questions from the public, this is the opportunity for you all to weigh in because we said nothing was going to be finalized without public input. And so that's why we're here this evening. So I just wanted to let you know that. And I'm going to repeat some of the information that I shared with you the other day when we did have the press conference because we're in a great place. And as, we've moved, as we're moving through this crisis to recovery, one of the things that I've talked about is always making sure that the citizens had the information that we have, that we share the information with you, and that the residents are informed and have the most up-to-date and accurate information on the Flint water efforts and the progress that we've made. So, so that's what I want you all to have, is that kind of information. Um, I said it already that we're here to talk about the, the um, long-term primary and the backup water source. And that's really, really important. 
if you didn't hear the other day, I do want to just let you know about where we are with Fast Start because we're in phase four and it kicks off this month. And we know that getting the lead and the galvanized pipes are just another piece of healing the water system and healing the community. And so the plan has not changed. It's to replace lead service lines at 6,000 homes this year. And uh, let me repeat that the state has committed up to 97 million to investigate at least 18,000 service lines over the next three, three years and remove them if they are lead or galvanized. And we know this puts us on, the, on a solid path going forward. We have to do that, but we have to do more. To date, we have replaced lines at 855 homes, and another 235 uh, had been investigated, but they were found to be copper to copper, so nothing had to be done there. Uh, one of the things people have asked is, where are we working? And uh, uh, what, what we have said is we've had to prioritize, and we're gonna continue to prioritize pipe replacement in areas of the city that are most likely to have lead service lines where we have a high number of seniors and young kids. And I hope that you're going to notice a lot more work getting done because we have four crews that are in the 10 zones around the cities to replace the lines in 2017. And last, last year when we started this effort, we got started late in the season. And so now we've got a lot more time, and that's why I'm saying you should see a lot more work and a lot more progress happening this, this time around. It should be much more noticeable. And we plan to have every lead tainted service line in the city replaced by the end of 2019. That's been our goal, and, and we haven't changed from that. Um, but like I said, in addition to pipe replacement, we have been, we've been hard at work. We've been hard at work and we've been reviewing analysis of our long-term primary and our backup water source alternatives. And it was a lot. It, it wasn't an easy decision. It was complex legal. It was engineering, operational, and, and regulatory issues that we had to consider. And, and we took our time. We wanted to take our time and make sure we got it right. Uh, this was six months in the making and we weren't going to rush to any decision. I remember telling you that before. We weren't gonna rush because this is too important. And um, I know we handed out the information and we have it again because we looked at over a dozen. We looked at over a dozen different water source options but we always knew that protecting public health was gonna be our primary consideration. And um, we wanted to also address social and economic concerns. Those were driving factors in what made our decision, but public health was the primary concern. And that was one of the things we complained about before was we believed that profit was put over public health. And so this time around in all of our decision making, public health is one of the driving factors. And it was so important that we wanted to hire a, a, a chief public health officer, uh, advisor. So public health was our top priority when we made that. And that was the reason that I, I recommended that we stay with the Great Lakes Water Authority as our primary source of water. We didn't need to go through another single change. And when that decision was made, we talked about public health uh, because we don't need to go through the anxiety or the fears that come with switching a water source again. We don't need to do that and we shouldn't have to do that. And so that was part of the reason that that recommendation was made. Um, you know, because we know the water has been improving. We don't need to lose time, so we need to stay where we are. So in ensuring public, public uh, health and safety was the number one priority. But we also wanted to be fiscally responsible, and this was the lowest cost water source solution, and it would minimize rates in the future. And we also got some other benefits as a result of this. So think about this, the federal funds through that drinking water revolving fund program, we can use that to uh, help upgrade the city's aging and deteriorating infrastructure. We know we're losing a lot of water. We're losing 
Uh, and I'm going to let the water experts speak to that uh, in a little bit. And the finance people tell you the financial implications, but we're losing 35 to 40 percent of our water because our infrastructure is so deteriorated. And so this gives us an opportunity to address that. The other thing that this plan gives us is we get our pipe back. That was something that we were really angry about. We thought, well, how could we not get, you know, how, how we lose our pipe? So we get that 72-inch transmission line asset back. So that's something else that comes with this. People have asked, what about the $7 million a year that we have to pay for KWA? This eliminates that 28-year, $7 million a year bond obligation to the KWA. We got that covered. And the other good thing about this is if we go with Great Lakes Water Authority, we have access to a low income assistance program. They call it the RAP program. Go ahead, clap. I'm, we need to clap. It's the Water Relief Assistance Program. We have access to that. We didn't have that. We set something up thanks to uh, United Way, uh, uh, Jamie Gaskin and G-Card and the city getting together to put some funds uh, to help residents pay their water bills. But when that money's gone, that money's gone. So this gives us access to that program. And the other good thing about this recommendation is we finally have a backup system. We've never had a backup source before. And so now we have that. So this recommendation provides excellent public health protection and it's fiscally responsible, but it also has the quickest implementation time of any of the other water source alternatives. So. That's, that's why this recommendation is being put forward. One of the things that was difficult, but it did, it accomplished, we had, we had to work together. We had to work together, and it was a partnership. And it, it forged partnerships where we thought we'd never have some. We didn't even think we wanted them anymore. Um, but it, it forged partnerships between the city, the county, Great Lakes Water Authority, as well as our state and federal partners. And, you know, I said it in the press conference that it wasn't easy. We didn't go in there, you know, hugging and kissing each other. Uh, we were not happy to be with each other. We weren't excited. We were pointing fingers and we were blaming and we said this is getting us nowhere and it doesn't help the, the residents of the city of Flint. And that's what we're supposed to be doing is protecting the welfare and the well-being of the people. And so we had to put our anger and our egos aside and decide what is best for the people. And so we had to have a common goal and it was making sure that the residents of Flint had access to clean, affordable drinking water. And so this was a win for the residents. So let me just put it in a nutshell. We thought this was the best option because it protects public health, it addresses social and economic concerns, and it's fiscally responsible. But like I said uh, Tuesday, we're not done. And here we are today. We said we need to hear from you. We need to hear from the residents. We have the experts right here up at the table but we're not going to do anything we can't finalize anything until we hear from you and we hear what your questions are and what your concerns are and we address those issues this is our community we need to be on the same page as we move forward together and that's why we're here at the first in a series of town hall meetings, whether, like I said, they're this way, they're on the radio, or we have to pull another one together. Um, so I'm happy to be here. I'm happy you all are here. And I just want to tell you who is up here uh, at the table with me. And I don't know if I'm saying it in order or not. So you all raise your hand so that they don't think Rob is John. So from the city of Flint, I have Rob Ben. Ben you know what, I'm going to let me use this paper so I can give you their official, um, their official titles as well. Rob Benzik, he's the Water Service Center Supervisor for the City of Flint. I have, 
Mark Adis, engineer for the city of Flint. I hope you all are raising, are you raising your hand? I can't, okay, okay, okay. I have John Young who we've just decided he's part of the city of Flint, but he is the water expert. He is one of the lead, you know, you're formidable. I mean, really, he is one of the leading experts in the country, and for us to have him here working with us in the city of Flint is truly a blessing, and people need to know that. I have Mr. Dave Sabuda, the chief financial officer for the city of Flint. Dr. Pamela Pugh, where are you? We talked about public health being, you know, our, the reason that why we're making our decisions, and there's our chief public health advisor. Okay, let me see. I have... Mr. Rich Baird, where are you, Rich? Down at the end, advisor to the governor, and he has been working with us day in and day out. Mr. Bryce Feiner, um, Feigner, he's the director of Drinking Water and Municipal Assistance Division, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality. And Mr. George Christian, Flint Action Plan Coordinator, Michigan Department of Environmental Quality, and you probably also recognize, George, where are you? Okay, because, you know, he's been with the core team. And I was a little confused because I saw Paul Newman here and he told me that was his backup. So, so hi, Mr. Newman. <laughs> and last but certainly not least is Mark Derno. He's been the on-scene coordinator with the US EPA. And you might think, he, you know, he's been here so long, you just think he's part of the community. So having said that, uh, where is Mr. Jones? Our, Sylvester, can you stand up? Because I think he's gonna be helping Kristen and Tiffany. Okay, there's Tiffany all the way in the back because they will be taking questions. Uh, some people may come up to the microphone. I think you all have given out cards as well. And Sylvester, if you can help them, I think he's gonna help them uh, facilitate this. We are going to go ahead and get started. You want people to come up to the microphone or to hand their cards. If you have a card, who should they give it to, you or Sylvester or Tiffany? Okay. So first of all, uh, as you know, the city and the state and other community groups are distributing filters for tap water. I, under I understand, but let me go there first, if you would, please, uh, to protect the tap water for drinking, okay? And the research has shown that those are very effective, and they intend to continue to distribute those 
through the removal of the lead service lines because of the fact that uh, those service lines can, those disruptions in the construction can stir up particulates and such. And so they intend to do that even though uh, compliance, if you will, or the action level standard will be met. Uh, relative to the other uh, issues, if you have health related problems, you should report those to, first of all, the city first because they run the water department but we have health agencies who are following up on all health-related complaints to see if your specific complaints are related to whatever situation is causing those complaints. And so um, I, would, I would recommend that you, you provide that information to first the city have, first. Sir. Okay, and so no one has followed up? Is that what you're saying? No. So our public health professionals have investigated that and they have determined that for most folks that that is not a health concern. However, we always recommend that you follow the advice of your physician. So if you have part particular health conditions, follow the advice of your physician. So. Then don't take a shower. And let, let me add something. I wanted to add something to that because, you know, when we were talking about public health, we thought that we needed to have a town hall really dedicated to public health. And I know Dr. Pugh is going to talk about that because we've been saying that's been the top priority for us is public health. And so I know she'll probably be giving us those dates because we're scheduling. I'm not sure if it's a series of them, Dr. Pugh, but we have that scheduled because we want to do some separate just for that as well. But I am glad you brought that to our attention, but we do need to give you that information as well. Thank, thank you. My name is Chris Del Maroney. I live in Flint, Michigan. If this is the uh, route we're going to go, or any route involving GLIWA, uh, we the citizens of Flint want to have proportional representation on the GLIWA board, not on some subcommittee. We want to have a voice on the board to help set rates because we know they're going to go up. Uh, my, other question is, can we act as our own backup system, putting in water into our, the Flint Tower and use that in the event of a failure, whether we end up with KWA or GLIWA? Uh, we are losing a tremendous asset in that plant. We are losing the right to any water from KWA, according to this agreement, and it just seems uh, nearly the act of privatization of our water, even though KWA and GLIWA are semi-quasi governmental boards, uh, we're going to be on the outside with this agreement. Um, the other thing is if, I think everyone in this room agrees that water rates are too high here in the city of Flint. We, we are running our system with 70% payment of the water bills from the residents. 
And that tells me as long as we can run our system at that level, 70% of payment, that obviously we are all being charged too much. And we need a reduction in that. We keep hearing from the administration, the mayor, the city council that our rates are too high. Well, it is exactly the mayor, the administration, and the council who can lower our rates. And I'm not, I'm not understanding, if we're all in agreement that the rates are too high, why something isn't being done. Yeah, thank you. Mayor, I can answer the first part of the gentleman's question, but someone else will have to talk about rates, if that's all right with you. I, I can also talk about the storage as well, if you want. Okay. So the first part of your question, the reason I believe I'm qualified to, to answer is because for years, uh, Flint was served by Detroit Water and Sewer, and they, along with Oakland County, Macomb County, Wayne County, were not served particularly well. In fact, I think that it's fair to say that, um, that Detroit held its water wholesale customers hostage and passed on enormous rates um, for the cost of the water. Um, during the Detroit bankruptcy, uh, GLEWA was formed, the Great Lakes Water Authority. The board that exists that oversees GLEWA is composed of a uh, representative uh, appointed by the county executive from Wayne, Oakland, Macomb, from two from the city of Detroit, and one uh, from the governor representing, that must represent the other wholesale customers um, that uh, are not part of those three counties. Um, it is Governor Snyder's position that at the earliest possible time, the board member that we currently have representing the collar wholesalers, um, uh, that, that, uh, that that next appointment will go to a Flint person. And I'm sorry that I don't know um, exactly when the term is up or have not had any negotiations about um, uh, shortening the term once this deal is done, but Flint will represent about 5% of the um, total revenue base uh, um, uh, under this arrangement for Great Lakes Water Authority. And therefore, I think uh, the request for representation is very valid. The second point that I would that I would make is, please don't confuse the DWSD of the past with the the GLWA of the present, and it is very very different, um, especially given the fact that when Detroit Water and Sewer uh, was the only entity, they had a fixed cost. Now forgive me, I'm an old accounting guy, so they had a fixed cost for water of about 45 percent. Best practice is 90%. And when you can only determine with any degree of accuracy 45% of your expenses, then you end up, uh, uh, I almost used a bad word, you end up um, irritating uh, the other customers uh, that, uh, that because you're basically passing on those costs to others. And in fact, in the old DWSD, their own inability or unwillingness to pay for their water was passed on to everybody else. All of that is ultimately what drove, I think, Flint to the KWA answer. But the fact is today, um, Gliwa is at a 75% fixed cost. Their, their water rates, um, uh, by the memorandum of understanding agreement uh, that all of the stakeholders signed, uh, does not allow for an increase over 4%. And in fact, the increases have been less than that. In the, in the years of operation. And then the last point I'd make before turning it over to John is that um, uh, uh, the, the GLIWA, um, uh, the, the, uh, the, the GLIWA capacity uh, is one where um, they're backstopping, obviously, the obligation to KWA. But more importantly, um, it, this, this arrangement allows for them to um, uh, be the kind of wholesaler that uh, passes on the same benefits that the folks in Oakland County wanted, Macomb County wanted, and Flint wants and should have. So there is mutuality of interest. John? Yeah, and, and I guess I'll add just, a, just one or two sentences to what you've said, because uh, in, in looking at how we were going to structure this deal moving forward, 
you know, we heard that Detroit water and sewer and Gleewell were different, but we needed to prove it to ourselves. And so we took a hard look at the operating costs, what has happened over the last three or four years with respect to operating costs with, uh, with Great Lakes Water, and they've actually reduced their operating costs over the last several years by $80 million. They've gotten bond refunds of $600 million. They have a very effective energy management program where they're saving $400,000 a year. So they are really focused on cost savings, and we, and we had to prove that to ourselves. But, but, but addressing the questions, the other questions that were asked here, in the 1960s here in Flint, we had, what, double the population, and we were pumping 60 million gallons a day out of our, out of our water plant. And we built a lot of water storage because we had a lot of industry that needed that storage. And that's a wonderful asset that we've had, and we've maintained maintain that asset. We have about 50 million gallons of water storage on our system. And we need, to, we need to use that to drive the best value that we can. And moving forward, we're going to do it to drive value in two different ways. One way is we, pay, we will pay our water bill to Gliwa based on how much water we use on a peak. Okay, so if we can minimize how much water we use on a peak day, um, we can reduce our water bill to Gliwa. So rather than on those peak days, rather than continuing take, taking all the water out of the big pipeline, we will take water out of storage and supplement it, and that will save us money. And secondly, we do have that water for emergencies. Um, it would be a relatively short emergency, maybe a day or two, and anything beyond that, we would need to get supplemental water from a neighboring utility, but we certainly intend to take that water first. And then finally, regarding rates. Um, obviously, if we improve our collection rates, um, that improves the rate situation. But I will tell you, I mean, when you hear a 70% collection rate, what that really means is, you know, we're getting, you know, we're getting payment from 70% of our bills. And what has to happen there, if your neighbor is not paying their water bill, you're picking up a portion of that water bill. That's, that's the way it works. And that's why it's important that everybody, everybody share the burden here a little bit, because the water system needs money to operate. We saw, we've seen what happens when it doesn't have money. You know, we went a, a decade here without investing in, in our water system. So, you know, we, we want to improve the 70%. When we improve the 70%, everybody else's rates will be better managed. But look at your neighbor. You know, if you, it's, this is something we're all in it together.
So thank you for your question as well as your, I mean, your points that are, are quite valid. And I think that this is why, I know this is why it is very critical, the work that Dr. Mona Hanna-Atisha is doing with the registry that she will have for residents of Flint that will be monitoring um, residents who, or, or people who lived in Flint during the crisis. And so that is going to be key. And we will be monitoring this. And these are questions that, that we all have. And so um, it's going to be very critical for all of us to, to keep an eye on this. There are some resources. There is the Medicaid expansion that will go until 20, um, Rich, that is going until? Uh, I believe the enrollment goes uh, into 2018, uh, the, end, the end of fiscal 2018. However, however, um, the expansion covers, because, and I'm not a doctor, and I wish uh, Dr. Eden Wells were here because she knows this stuff much better than I, but I'll, I'll try. First of all, sir, I'd like to say I'm sorry. Uh, I know words are cheap, um, but uh, Flint was my birthplace and my home, and, and, I'm, and, and what happened here is terrible, and, and, and it absolutely is terrible, and I wish I could change it. So let me get to your question. Um, the Medicaid expansion program now has 24,000 people enrolled. It uh, covers uh, targeted case management. It covers um, uh, um, primary care physician, covers all, all medical uh, behavioral uh, counseling up to age 21, up to age 21. So uh, even though the enrollment period ends at the end of 2018, and the reason it was set up for up to age 21 is, you're exactly right, lead poisoning is a soft tissue issue. Oh, oh. If, apparently I've misspoken. You have, right. I'm sorry. The Medicaid expansion is good for the next five years, or four years. We started in April of 2014, so it's good through um, April of 2019. So we still have time. We still have time to be able to enroll. We're still pushing people to enroll for that. Um, one of the things that we're not calling it the Medicaid expansion, we're saying the health care expansion, because it's not just for poor people. We have up to 400% of poverty level. So a lot of people think that they don't qualify for it, and they can't. You can already have your private insurance. So we really encourage everyone to please apply for that if you meet the criteria. And basically the criteria is if you have a child um, through 0 to 21 if you were pregnant and you live in the city of Flint, you attended school here, um, daycare, then you're eligible to apply. You can go on to our michigan.gov bridges website and you can apply online. Um, and we also have people who used to live here that were affected during that time. So we have people that are in um, other parts of the state that are currently receiving this. So please share this information with everyone. It's for zero to 21 or for pregnant. Um, it's not for the seniors. I'm sorry. And it's a federal, this is, this is a federal, so you can, you can boo. <laughs> um, but, but, this is for, but this is for zero to 21, okay? All right. I, And I do want to say that in addition to the mayor bringing on myself, the chief public health advisor, we've also reinstated the technical advisory board. And, and we are really taking a look at the water system and the impact on, on health. And looking at this, um, and I know the, in response to the first question, looking at it from a systemic, um, looking at the whole water system, not just lead, but all of the other um, um, possible uh, variables that are there in the water that could impact health. Okay, I've got a question that comes from um, someone in the audience. But before I read the question, I want to ask uh, that questions and comments be limited to two minutes. We don't have a lot of time, but we have a lot of questions. And if the panelists can give clear and concise answers, um, two to three minutes as well, that'll help us get through more of the questions. So the question that I have is, how can the people who still live in the city of Flint get past the mistrust of government and trust what is being said about the rates and quality of water or anything else?
Well, I'm not afraid to answer it because there's no good answer. Um, uh, there is absolutely no reason for people to be trusting until they see day in and day out consistency of behavior and putting things together in ways that are a tangible difference and that actually address the problems that people have. When I walked in tonight, a, a gentleman told me about, he's a handyman, and he found some things, you know, uh, some corrosion uh, in, inside the sink, and he said, I think the water may have caused this. And, and I said, then let's sit down, because if, if, if we can prove that the water caused these problems, then we'll figure out a way to fund them, because our job should be to figure out what the needs are and to, and to work hard to address them. I, I know that you'd like the governor to simply you know, wave a hand and create something, but we have a legislative body and we're accountable to them and we and so we need to go to them with any good proposition about what this community needs in order to help. Um, and frankly, you have no right to trust anybody, at least at the state level, until you see that behavior over and over and over again that is addressing that which you know is wrong and needs to be fixed. I was just going to add to that, and that's the reason that we're, we're having these town hall meetings. That's why we're keeping this open. Um, like I said, we're going to uh, have it so people can email us. We're going to set more of these up because you, you said it, Rich, everything that's happened before, we've got to, it's, it's on us to prove it to people, and that's why we have to have the experts at the table that we have at the table. Um, and we've got to validate and, and verify each other's findings. We're not going to take uh, one person said, this is what it is. Somebody else has to show us this is what it is. And so does another uh, person have to come and say, this is what it is. And we have to verify the findings of each other and hold each other accountable. So that's, that's what we're going to be doing, and that's what we're going to be continuing to do. And that was why it was so important that uh, even for us to bring uh, someone uh, the caliber of John Young here. Uh, it was because we knew we needed the best experts around helping us and leading us and guiding us for the decisions that we're making, and that's what we're going to continue to do. I would like to get the information um, as far as the address where she said that took place. We need that information because I don't know if, we, if that had been reported or not, and I'm not going to answer the water questions. I'll let Rob and the rest of you handle that. But you, I think she said the same thing that the gentleman before said, is we need health care for all, and that's not something that we have disagreed with. Uh, one of the things we know is uh, we've talked about all of us are at risk, but we always start with protecting our kids and, and um, first. And then we had to find out what we have to put in place for others because even though we, have, we know that our kids are impacted, we're the ones taking care of them. We're the ones taking care of them, so we've got to be healthy so we can be there for them. So that's something that we've talked about, and that is the part where we haven't been able to do it 
as good a job or as quick a job because usually what's happened with the, the contamination has usually been in a pediatric population. So we were more able to respond quicker to them. And so it's taking us a little bit longer. Uh, but I'm going to stop because I'm going to get out of my area of expertise in a minute. But Rob, I don't know if you want to talk about uh, what the, the lady brought up or not. So, so I can assure you that there was not sewage in the water system. Um, we did have a s substantial amount of rain, but it, it did not, it would not get into the water system. And regarding her comment on Legionella, Legionella is going to happen. There's nothing we can do to stop it from happening. We're, but what we're going to do is we're going to work diligently to maintain the, the chlorine residual in the water system. That, that's the best defense that we can possibly do to, to help with Legionella. Yeah. All right. Uh, here's the issue that I have. This isn't really a comments uh, town hall if we don't have all the people here, which is Gleewa and Jeff Wright, because I had a bunch of questions to ask both of them because of the fact I wanted to know how our they community is benefiting off of this deal that's getting ready to go down because what I'm hearing is the water rates will not go down for the citizens of Flint. Now we uh, don't have to pay the um, two, 1999, 2000, 2001 revolving loan because that was forgiven. And the emergency manager stated that our water rates went up, up because of that. Now in this deal you're saying that if Gleewa takes the pipe, the KWA, the 18 million gallons per day which they will be getting, it would knock off $7 million off the $12 million that we will be having to pay Cleveland. So that will leave us with $5 million. Now all we have to pay is $5 million a year. So now, how is it that Genesee County can pay the same price that we pay as citizens of Flint, and they pay $150 every three months, and Flint pays $150 every month? Now, the mayor and the city council has the ability to drop the water rates because the city of Flint is paying uh, about $7.92 $7 per 1,000 1, cubic feet, which is equivalent to 7,480 gallons. But they're charging the residents per 100 cubic feet, which is equivalent to 748 gallons. So when John, Mr. Young said, it's for operational costs, now we're getting treated water and the plant doesn't have anybody to operate it. What operational costs are we paying? So my, 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 my problem here is we keep on throwing out numbers, figures, this and that. When will we see the actual contract with the numbers so that I can sit back and look over it? And uh, Mr. Jarno, is there any way that it took them several months to look over and come up with this deal. Is there any way that we can extend the 30 day public comment to 60 days so I can take more than 30 days to look over this contract so I can make the right decision that's best for the community? Thank you. I'd like to uh, address the gentleman's question regarding the SRF forgiveness and, and the various uh, in, uh, water rate issues. Uh, first of all, SRF has not been forgiven. Uh, the payments have been pushed back, but the debt is still out there, and we have to deal with that debt. On the, on the water rates, we anticipate holding the, the current, with this deal, we anticipate holding the current rate, and this is a very good first start. We are avoiding a significant increase, and again, this is a tremendous first start. Second, what we're going to be doing is we're going to be studying the rate. So when we look at the operations and we look at um, everything that we have done to date, we are going back with a independent uh, people who are experts in, the, in this area in regards to rates and water and sewer systems. We're going to be looking at all the issues that have occurred, and then we'll be building a new rate schedule, new rate tables. Thirdly, what we have here is we have to then look at our rates and determine how are we going to invest those invest back into the system. With that investment, that will allow us into the future to lower rates in that manner. Uh, but as of right now, 
this step allows us to avoid uh, current rate increases. So again, we're, we're plowing everything back in, looking at the rates, and hopefully as we uh, upgrade infrastructure, upgrade other issues to the system, that will drive rates down in, in this situation. No, as far as... Oh, I want to, oh, let, let's touch on the, uh, the thank you, Mayor, uh, on the 60-day question, pushing the, the rates out and, or extending the, the, the period of, of comment. I want to make, make it very clear that the $100 million that has been appropriated by the federal government, that it will come through the state government to the city of Flint, is a competitive number. Other municipalities who do eventually or could eventually fall into Flint's category could also access these dollars. The longer we wait, the longer someone can come in and access those dollars. Number two, the longer we wait, the more we pay to other, other uh, entities, such as GLIWA and to um, KWA. So right now we're making monthly bond payments. With this arrangement, the bond payment will disappear. Uh, the other issue is we are now uh, at a higher water rate than uh, the, um, the standard customers. We have a, we have a short-term customer rate from Gliwa. We are going to a long-term customer, customer rate from Gliwa. The sooner we can get there, the sooner we can drop, we can, we, well, our costs will, will, will fall down, and then we'll be able to make our payments in a more, uh, more efficient manner. And again, this will all keep us in fiscal uh, solidity. Uh, it, it, this will keep us solid, and, and we'll be able to make our, our, our payments. And to address the question directed to EPA, um, uh, no, we do not have a federal requirement uh, for the comment period. Uh, we did recommend the 30-day comment period because that's pretty standard. Yes, once we... I can take the first part of the question that related to um, Legionella bacteria and uh, the filter studies uh, that are still ongoing uh, by the University of Michigan. 
Um, so with respect to Legionella, well, what Mr. Binsick said was correct. Uh, Legionella uh, bacteria uh, is present in most water systems uh, in the country. Legionella, Legionnaire's disease, there was an outbreak in, Ju in July of 2015. Uh, there's, uh, there's no doubt about that. And there's no doubt that it uh, uh, most likely came from the water system itself. This is the April 20th, 2017 City of Flint Town Hall meeting. Give it up. 